right welcome uh, to this uh, next clip yeah in this part we are going to look at NVTs yeah we will look at NVTs here uh, let's continue right yeah let me just enlarge this slightly okay we will look at NVTs and perpetuities yeah so in this slide we look at the definition for NVT. Yeah, NVT is actually a finite series. Yeah, finite series means uh, limited uh, for a limited time. Yeah, it's a series that means it's continued by some cash flows. Yeah, a series of cash flows of equal payments. Yeah, so the payment is fixed. Okay, that occur at regular intervals. Yeah, that means fixed time period yeah? this is a fixed time period the total duration and then the interval yeah, between payments will also be fixed in terms of time yeah? and the payment itself will also be fixed yeah so there are three things fixed yeah first fixed payment equal payment then the payment occurs at regular time inter intervals okay so fixed time interval okay and it is fixed series yeah? that means fix uh, uh, the payment is fixed for a period of time a fixed period of time okay so these three things yeah when uh, they are they are there then it's called annuity yeah? when these three features are present then it's called an annuity yeah now there are two types of annuity one is uh, a common yeah or ordinary annuity we call this the most common annuity would be ordinary annuity yeah so this ordinary annuity is when the payments okay this equal payments occur at the end of the time period okay that means month let's say it's a monthly payment and this monthly payment occurs at the end of each month yeah then it's called ordinary annuity but if the payment occurs at the beginning of the month for example beginning of the year or beginning of the month or beginning of the week okay then we call this annuity due yeah so even though NVT, the term yeah, used NVT uh, refers to annual, yeah? annual means yearly, yeah? but here we say it is regular interval, not yearly, yeah? not necessarily yearly, it can be any regular interval, for example, monthly, weekly, quarterly, okay, uh, daily, for example, okay, daily, even hourly, yeah? you can use this term NVT. Originally, NVT was for year, yeah? but now we use it for regular interval. Yeah? So, if the payment, the payment, the fixed payment occurs at the beginning yeah, of the time period, then it's called NVT due. If it occurs at the end, yeah, then it's called ordinary NVT. Yeah? So, that's the difference between these two types of NVTs. There are two types. One is ordinary NVT, the other is NVT due. Alright, then we also have perpetuity. Yeah? Perpetuity dif differs from annuity in one aspect only. Yeah? So, annuity is finite, means limited yeah? for a limited time period. This is infinite. Okay, that means uh, there is, it's for eternity. Yeah? You have a starting point, but there's no ending point. Yeah? So, it's a continuous series of equal payments at equal interval yeah? or regular interval. So, you have also regular interval here. So it has uh, two common features, equal payments and regular intervals, but it has infinite series yeah, for perpetuity. That's the difference between perpetuity and annuity. Yeah? Alright, so let's go on and look at the timeline yeah, for an annuity. Okay, for an annuity, the timeline, yeah, let's, let me just, right, this is a timeline. Yeah? Okay, this is now, one period from now, two periods from now. Okay, n minus one period from now and n periods from now. Yeah, and this is the interest rate. Okay, so and then when you have an annuity, you have this. Yeah, you have a fixed amount payment. Yeah? This is called the payment. Yeah, annuity. Yeah? we use the symbol A for annuity. It can be a cash inflow or a cash outflow. Yeah, it can be an inflow which is positive can also be an outflow yeah so uh, if it is an uh, inflow here then it will be inflow throughout yeah? if it's an outflow here and it will be outflow throughout yeah 
So uh, this occurs at regular interval. That means this is one one year. Let's say uh, year one, end of year one, and end of year two here. So this occurs every year eh, for n number of years. Yeah? So this is an NWT. This is a feature of the NWT. Yeah? So here you have uh, uh, introduced yeah, in this problem. We have introduced another element here. We call this the fifth element. Okay, fifth element. Uh, in a time value of money problem. Yeah? In chapter 5, we have looked at four elements. Yeah? The interest rate is still here. The time, okay? the number of periods of time. Then you have uh, in the previous yeah, chapter 5, we have present value or future value. Yeah? These are the four elements. But here, we introduce the fifth element. Yeah? We call this the payment, yeah? payment or PMT. So here we use A yeah, rather than PMT. PMT is a bit long. That's why I've used A okay, for annuity and we'll, we will use P for perpetuity. Yeah, that's the difference. Now with this, yeah, we actually replace uh, one element yeah, uh, that we have seen in the previous chapter. Yeah. But this, yeah, the sum of this, yeah, we want to know the sum, okay, the value of all these cash flows yeah, together. But where do you want to determine the value? Yeah? If it is at a future point in time, this is called future value of annuity. Okay, that means at this point, what is the value of all these cash flows? Okay, that is called future value. Yeah? At time n, yeah? let's say at the uh, just after the last payment. Okay, at this point, yeah, what is the value of all these cash flows at this point in time? Yeah, that is this is called future value of annuity. Alright, then this is the formula for that future value. Future value of NVT at time N. Okay, I've used capital N here and I've used small n here. Yeah, I use interchangeably. Yeah? Doesn't really matter. Is equal to the NVT payment here, this NVT payment, multiplied by oops, sorry about that. Multiplied by one plus R. Okay, R is here, raised to the power of N, N is here, right? minus 1 divided by r yeah? so now the future value of an nvt uh, is influenced yeah, or is determined by four factors yeah? what are the four factors oh, sorry three factors not four factors yeah? the fourth factor is here yeah? okay one is nvt okay the payment then you have the interest rate which is here and also here then you have the number of periods or the time or the term yeah. So only three factors. One, two, okay, these two are the same factor, interest rate, and this is the term, yeah, or n. So three factors, yeah. So in this model or in this formula, we know that there are four elements. Yeah? Uh, just like in chapter five, we had four elements in uh, time value of money, yeah, a simple time value of money. Here what we do is we replace, yeah present value with payment okay and we replace future value with future value of NVT yeah? so we, we have two different elements here yeah? but these elements are similar to the elements that we have seen in chapter 5 yeah? but you need to remember for NVTs we have four elements this is one okay future value then you have NVT or the payment then you have interest rates and you have the term yeah, or number of periods. Yeah? These are the four elements. Yeah? Knowing three, you can solve for the fourth unknown. Yeah? So in this model, this is the unknown. These three are supposed to be known. Yeah? One, two, and three. All right. Now, if you want to determine the value of these cash flows at an earlier time, yeah? let's say at time zero, this is called present value of n. This is future value. If you want to determine the value of all these cash flows at this point in time. Now, this is present value. If you want to determine all these cash flows at an earlier time here, at time zero. Yeah? So, we call this present value of NVT at time zero. Right. Now, note that this present value okay, occurs one period yeah, or one year before the first payment occurs. Yeah. This is an important crucial point to note. Yeah? All right, yeah? So this is the formula. Okay? You need to just know the formula. This formula will be given uh, during exam. Yeah? Or 
uh, in the final this semester uh, because of the COVID uh, uh, virus threat. Okay, all uh, exams will be online. Yeah, so because it's online, you will have access to using your books, yeah, your textbook. You can use the textbook for the formula and so on. Yeah, uh, you can also uh, access the internet to get the formula. So formula will not be given in the final examination because the examination will be online. But yeah, you can um, uh, you can uh, access the formula from your textbook yeah, and also other resources. Yeah. So here, this is the formula. Yeah, note that this is present value of annuity. This is the annuity payment. Okay. Now note the difference between this formula and this formula. It is one minus one plus r raised to the power of negative n. Yeah, note this. Yeah, here is raised to the power of n, but here it is raised to the power of negative n. Yeah, so that's the difference. Yeah, here it is one minus. Here it is this minus one. Yeah, so note that. Yeah, this is future value, and this is present value. Is that okay? All right. Yeah, we will use. Uh, we will look at present value first. Okay, in this topic. And later on, we we'll look at future value at the end of this section. Yeah. Now let's look at perpetuity. Yeah. Okay. We have looked at annuities. Now we we'll look at perpetuity here. Okay. So it's the same. The only difference is that here there is no end. Yeah. Because there is no uh, defined ending. Yeah. Or maturity of the perpetuity. Yeah. The others are the same. Okay. Now you have. Payment. Yeah, this can be negative or positive, cash inflow or cash outflow, and this goes on forever. Yeah? Right now, here you cannot determine future value because the future. Okay, note this. Yeah, the future value is just after the final payment. Yeah. Okay. So here there is no final payment. Therefore, there is no defined future value. Yeah. Right. So therefore, here we look at present value only. Yeah. Present value of perpetuity is actually. The value of all these cash flows from here until infinity. Okay, that is the present value. So we want to know what is the value of all these cash flows worth from now until eternity, yeah, or uh, infinity, or forever. Yeah, what is the value of this? Yeah. So for this, you just—it's a very simple formula. It's just P divided by R. Yeah. So there are only two factors here. Yeah. Okay, or two elements, yeah. Three elements in total. This is one element. This is another element. This is another element. Okay, so this is the unknown element. These are the two known elements. Yeah. Once you know these two, then we can solve for this. Okay, that's the idea behind this. Yeah. Now notice here the time element is not does not appear. Yeah. But it does not appear. It does not mean that it is not there. Yeah? It is invisible. Okay, it is understood. N here. N. Is infinity. That is why it doesn't appear here. Yeah? It's infinity. Yeah, because it's infinity, then the formula is this way. Yeah, so n is already defined. Yeah? It is known. Yeah, therefore it doesn't appear here. Yeah, this can only be applied if n is infinity. Okay, uh, and this is a perpetuity. Yeah, All right. These are the formulas. So you need to know this formula. Now let's move on. Yeah, uh, about the calculator, we'll come to that a bit later. We'll skip this. Okay. Let's look at this example. Yeah, after carefully going over your budget, you have determined you can afford to pay six hundred and thirty-two dollars per month toward a new sports car. You call up, you call up your local bank and find out that the going rate is one percent per month for forty-eight months. Yeah, how much can you borrow? Yeah, so that's, that's the question. Yeah, now in this question, okay. Uh, you need to find out yeah, the known elements. What are the known elements? Yeah? The first one is this: six hundred and thirty-two dollars per month. This is the payment. Yeah, this is A. Yeah, in the formula. Yeah, annuity. Now note this. Yeah, this is per month. Yeah, previously in chapter five we have all used, and also in chapter six, yeah, uh, we have uh, seen that this pay, uh, cash flows occur in year. Yeah, yearly cash flows, but here it is monthly. Yeah, per month. Okay, therefore, when it's per month, okay, then the second element here, the interest rate, must also be per month. This cannot be per year. Yeah? Right? So this is the second element. This is 1%. This is the interest rate. Fortunately, this interest rate is also per month. Yeah? This is per month. The payment is per month. 
the interest rate must also be per month. Now the third element to know here is the period, yeah, number of periods.